in my review of the X1 Mark III, I mentioned that it would be cool to have the stamps feature built in. And though they didn't bring the feature itself to the controller, they did bring the mapping functionality, and it opens up with 3.11 version of Tractor Pro. And today, I will show you, as well as provide a link in the description to download the mapping, how to do this MIDI mapping for stamps on the X1 Mark III. The mapping will provide your on and off switches for all your stamps for deck A and B, as well as stamps FX on and off switches for deck A and B. The mapping will be quite similar to the one I showed you in the previous video with an F1, though this time it will be quite more tricky. Mapping today will contain two different layers, one which is available when you hold shift, and another one when you hold the secondary shift button. This provides quite intuitive, in my opinion, interface to control your stamps and stamps effects. The map in itself doesn't really contradict with what already comes out of the box with default Tractor X1 Mark III mapping, but rather enhances those features. Let's see what we are going to achieve today. First things first, mapping assumes that you are using your X1 Mark III for decks A and B. If you are using it for different decks, you'll need to figure out the mapping for yourself. I will show you the principles and it can be propagated to different controllers. When you hold shift, the pads will turn purple. And when you click them, you can see that stamps are being activated and deactivated. Let's hear. As you can see, purple pads, once you hold shift, they control your on and off switches for each of the stamps. But when I hold shift and also hold reverse, either on deck A or deck B, doesn't matter, the buttons turn red, meaning they are now controlling your stamps effects. And if I click them, you can see in a software that indeed they represent the stamps effect buttons available within the software. If you release reverse button right now, you can see that that's revert back to the uh, stamps on and off switches. And if I release shift, everything turns back to your default effects controls. This mapping does the same thing no matter if you are controlling your effects 3 and 4 or your mixer. There is one thing which is important to understand before doing this mapping. Unfortunately, it doesn't work with tractor colors that you can check here if you go to the X1 Mark III colors. And if I change the global scheme or my effects button scheme, the scheme will overwrite any mapping that you have. So for example, if I turn everything cyan, you can see that even if I hold shift, the buttons do control your stamps, but they will be cyan. And if I hold reverse, same scene applies to your stamps effects. So first things first, make sure you select your default color scheme. Let's start with empty mapping. For this, click Add within your controller manager, find Tractor and X1 Mark III. Be sure to select your import to be X1 Mark III. One disclaimer here is unfortunately with X1 Mark III, you cannot have several mappings active at the same time, so you'll need to dump all your mappings within the same file. With that out of the way, let's create our first modifier the same way we did with F1 mapping. Click Add in, find modifier, and let's create modifier number one and map it to your shift button. Same as we did with NF1, click interaction mode and select hold, as well as deselect overwrite factory map. If you leave this check mark on, it means that when you hold shift, everything else that is default mapped to this X1 will be disabled. We don't want that, therefore, disable this check mark. Last thing, let's change this value to 1, so that when we hold shift, you can see at the very top, the value indeed changes to 1. And when we release, the value changes back to 0. Now let's map our first stamps on and off switch. Click Add In, go to Deck Common, Submix, Slot Mute On. Click Learn, and let's click the very top button on the left. And now let's change the interaction mode to toggle. Since we want this button to only work when we hold shift, let's check that our modifier is set properly. Meaning that when modifier 1, which is our shift, is 1, only in this case our button will work. Lastly, let's check our assignment. Click here, deck A, slot 1. Let's check that everything works. I 
Indeed, everything works. Now let's add our MIDI out. As mentioned in a previous video, MIDI is two-directional communication. One part is that that sends MIDI commands into your computer, and second part is the MIDI commands that the computer sends to your MIDI device. In our case, the commands that the computer needs to send is actually LED colors. So I'm going to click Add Out. Tractor already suggests me the last mapped in function, so I'm going to click slot mute on. And again, as previously mentioned in my F1 mapping video, you cannot really click learn here and click any buttons. This is because Tractor doesn't know which color it has to set the button to, therefore we have to click here and navigate to our left, first FX button, and let's set it to purple. Let's check that our settings are intact. Our modifier 1 is set to 1, meaning that this LED will only turn purple when shift is pressed. Next thing is our assignment, deck A, slot 1, and our controller range shall be inverted as mentioned previously in the F1 video. Let's check that everything works. As you can hear, everything works. Since we want to map the secondary layer, which is available when you hold shift and then hold reverse at the same time, we need to map it. For this, I will use modifier number 2. Click add in modifier number 2. I will map it to reverse on the left deck. Let's check that our interaction mode is set to hold and that when we hold this button, the value is set to 1. The trick here is that we want this button behavior to be like this only when we hold shift. This means that we'll need to change the modifier conditions over here. Click modifier, select M1 and set it to 1. This means that when we hold shift, this button will be available. Let's check it in the modifier state over here at the top. When I hold shift, I can see that my modifier state for modifier 1 changes to 1. Let's now hold reverse. I can see that the modifier number 2 changes the value to 1, meaning everything works as expected. I can now release my reverse and see that value of second modifier reverts back to 0, and now release shift and see that everything reverts back. However, there is a trick here. When I hold shift and then hold reverse, and after that release shift first, and then release reverse, you can see that the modifier number 2 still obtains a value of 1. We will need to fix it. To do that, let's duplicate our modifier number 2 and map it to our shift button. What I want to do here is in case modifier number 2 still has a value of 1, I want to force it to become 0 every time I press shift. I'm changing the interaction mode to direct, meaning that I want to change the value when I press the button to the particular one. In this case, I want to change it to 0, meaning reset my modifier number 2. And the condition I want it to happen is when modifier 2 is still obtaining the value of 1. Let's check. Now I'm holding shift, you can see modifier 1 obtains the value of 1, everything works as expected. When I hold reverse, modifier number 2 obtains the value of 1. When I release reverse, it turns back to 0, and when I release shift, it turns back to 0 on modifier number 1. Now let's check our edge case. When I hold shift, number 1 obtains value of 1. When I hold reverse, it obtains value of 1. Now when I release shift and then release reverse, you can see that modifier 2 obtains the value of 1. However, when I click shift now, you can see that the modifier 2 is reset to the value of 0, just as we wanted. Quick fix that we also need to do here is since we want our shift and reverse work for both decks, let's also make a duplicate of our original mapping for reverse by clicking over here and mapping it to the reverse on the right deck. Keep in mind that since we are overriding the behavior of reverse buttons when held with shift, it actually disables your ability to use flux mode when holding shift and pressing reverse. So in your case, if you want a different secondary button, you can remap it later. Now let's create our mapping for our stamps effects. Click Add in, tag common, submix, slot, effects on. Let's map it to this button over here. Change the interaction mode to toggle. Assignment is deck A slot 1. 
and the condition under which we want it to be available is when our shift button is pressed, meaning modifier 1 is set to 1, as well as our modifier 2 is set to 1 as well, meaning our both buttons is held at the same time. Let's check that everything works. When I hold shift and hold this reverse button over here and click this button at the top, you indeed can see that stamps effects are enabled and disabled in software. However, it also enables and disables our stamps, as you can remember from our purple color. Let's fix it. In our slot mute on, let's add another condition. The condition is quite simple. We want this control to work when reverse is not held, meaning our modifier number two is set to zero. Let's check. I hold shift and reverse and click this button over here. Stamps effects within the software is changed, however, the stamps on and off is not triggered. Now let's finalize our mapping by adding MIDI output to the stamps effects LED. Click slot effects on and let's map it to the left deck, first effects button and thread. Let's check our assignment, which is deck A slot 1. Let's check our modifier conditions when shift is held, as well as reverse is held at the same time. It's only in this case we want this control to work. Let's check. Here I'm holding shift and I can see that the purple color turns on and off. Now when I hold reverse and click this button, I can see that the red one also changes its color, as well as represents within the software that stamps effects are being turned on and off. Let's also place a deck that indeed everything works as expected. As you can see, works perfectly. So you get the idea how to map those buttons on any controller. In my opinion, it makes X1 Mark III so much more versatile of a controller. Now I can come into the standard DJ booth and not only control my hot cues, my nudging, my playing pause, as well as my effects, but in addition to that, I can now control my stamps as well as stamps effects. I still hope that Tractor brings stamps native mode to the X1 Mark III. It would make life quite easier for both beginner and pro DJs. And while we are hoping for this to happen, we can still use the mapping I showed you today. As mentioned previously, the link will be in the description. You can import the mapping and use it to your liking. Having this mapping kind of mitigates the necessity to use a mixer mode on the X1 Mark III, because while you are in your effects mode, you can activate and deactivate different stamps, as well as mix with those stamps, as I showed you in the video right here. Also, if you haven't already, and you want to create the highest quality stamps from any track in your collection, check out the link in the description, as well as this video. Thanks for tuning in, and I will catch you in the next one.